My name is Gerd Hasenfuß. I'm professor of internal medicine and cardiology and I'm chief of the heart center at University Göttingen in Germany. Clinically, my expertise is heart failure. So I see patients with heart failure and do diagnosis and treatment. Uh, and my special field of expertise since years has been pathophysiology and treatment strategies of heart failure. My name is Lauren Field. I'm a professor in the Departments of Medicine and Pediatrics at Indiana University School of Medicine. Uh, it's, my research interests are in trying to develop strategies to promote myocardial regeneration in injured hearts. Hello, my name is Karl Teuscher. I'm a senior cardiologist and work in the Department of Cardiology of the University of Medicine in Göttingen. Um, my focus is on the one hand uh, um, the work with the patient, but on the other hand, research regarding heart failure development. The normal mammalian myocardium without intervention only has a limited capacity to undergo renewal post-injury. We've developed a transgenic mouse model that uses the alpha cardiac myosin heavy chain promoter to drive expression of the key cell cycle regulator, cyclin D2. These animals exhibit elevated levels of myocyte cell cycle activity in the adult heart and following myocardial infarction undergo a progressive uh, renewal in structural and functional recovery, uh, which results in relatively normal cardiac function. The purpose of the current study was to determine if other forms of stress also benefit from having ongoing cell cycle activity. To induce pressure overload, we used the mouse model of transversal aortic constriction, here called TAC, and to induce volume overload, we used the model of aortocaval shunt, here called shunt. Cyclin D2 overexpressing mice showed an improved survival in pressure overload, but not in volume overload. Analysis of the cardiac phenotype by echocardiography also showed a protective effect in pressure overload by preventing decreased contractility and ventricular dilatation, whereas in volume overload no effect of cyclin D2 overexpression was visible. Cyclin D2 overexpression protected from known molecular changes in heart failure, fibrosis, apoptosis, upregulation of BNP, and activation of the maladaptive signaling pathways cam 2 were prevented or reduced compared to wild-type mice. The cyclin D2 overexpressing mice also showed an exaggerated increase in wall thickness and heart weight to body weight ratio was also uh, more increased as in wild-type TAC-operated mice. Analysis of proliferation markers as thymidine for DNA synthesis or phosphorylated histone 3 for mitosis were also increased in the cyclin D2 transgenic animals after induction of pressure overload. This shows that in the cyclin D2 transgenic mice, cardiomyocyte proliferation is induced in pressure but not in volume overload and that this induction protects from development of heart failure. So also a very important finding of this paper is to see that the thickness of the left ventricular wall is not a bad sign per se. So obviously, it depends on how wall thickness develops. If wall thickness results from an increased number of myocytes, it's beneficial, this is the finding of the paper, but it may be harmful if it results from an increased thickness of the myocytes themselves. This probably results in uh, energy deficit and uh, deterioration of function. One of the interesting aspects of the current study is the fact that active cell cycle activity did not have a positive benefit in the setting of chronic uh, volume overload. Uh, neither having an increased number of myocytes on board prior to the onset of injury, nor having ongoing myocyte proliferation seemed to have a benefit in this model of injury. This is very different from the other models that we've studied in the past, and it underscores the fundamental signaling differences between uh, pressure versus chronic uh, volume overload that the Hassenfuss lab has discovered previously. We've known since the uh, mid-1980s that relatively simple genetic interventions could enhance cardiac myocyte cell cycle activity. And in the ensuing years, many different pathways have been identified and tested in animal models. It remains to be seen what uh, intervention will have the best effect to try to recover an injured my heart, and it also remains to be seen whether having rapid versus more gradual myocyte re replacement would have the uh, greater benefit and have the least adverse consequences post-injury. I'm sure over the next few years these, these issues will be resolved.